If you are in need of having and monitoring your cost in terms of API call for your LLM, as an example, you are doing a done for you service for your client, or you simply want to actually keep track of your expense in terms of actually an API usage for LLM, so large language model, I actually find a service called Helicon.ai, which allow you to basically see this as a gateway in between your NA8 or your make scenario and will actually intercept the request, pass this to OpenAI or to Cloud. Uh, Cloud is also supported. Azure, Gemini, all, all the big uh, LLM models are being supported uh, within the platform. Hi, my name is Quentin. I'm an AI automation freelancer and I'm actually sharing my journey on make.com and NA8. If you are actually interested and if you like the content, you might actually want to join my newsletter at joinmyjourney.com. All right, so we are now back into the Helicon dashboard. As you see, uh, I've actually made a couple of requests since I discovered the, the product. Uh, and what I like about it is actually the nice dashboards showing you the top models that has been used, the amount of token, and also the average cost, which is actually important. Um, I'm going to show you where you can actually get your API key. Um, obviously, Helicon is actually designed to be used for full code application, um, but I've actually made, uh, reading the documentation, I've actually found a way to on how to integrate this with uh, uh, NA8 and make.com. Um, in order to do this integration, so it's going to be an HTTP request. You're not going to be able to use actually the, uh, the, the chat GPT or the cloud uh, node per se. Uh, you're going to have to do an HTTP request and actually make the request over there. The way actually this all work together is that you are actually sending your request into Helicon. Helicon send that back to the LLM that you are looking for. And this is actually how the world system worked. And this is actually how we can actually then track your request. I'm going to show you as well uh, <clears throat> the request over here. As you see, I've actually, I can see which request and which one wasn't actually working, uh, which one worked, and what was the request itself, what was the response. Uh, so if you see over there, I can actually just move my head uh, on the system. I'm going to move this over there as well, sorry. Um, so you are a helpful assistant, research assistant. Uh, here is my prompt, and here is the response from the assistant as well. Uh, so that's actually, I think, very nice to be able to track uh, the response from your request. Um, again, if you do a done for you service, uh, this could actually be helpful to see how the user is actually using the application. Uh, for example, let's say you have actually a content uh, done for you service. Uh, you can see how your user actually are generating uh, the post and you might potentially actually tell them, hey, your prompt is too basic. You might have to go and uh, go a little deeper. Um, I wanted to show you as well one thing that I uh, like about is that you can go now, you can actually add a tag, basically. We are adding, in this case, an app tag, which allow you to now track from there. Like you see, I have actually uh, some requests that were made using the NA8 and make, um, where I'm passing actually the information of the application itself. So you could literally name this the same as your client or the same as your um uh, workflow, for instance, uh, and then you can actually see the amount of requests being sent and you see which workflow is actually the most um, uh, used uh, in this case. Without further ado, I'm going to jump into uh, NA8 and I'm going to show you, I'm going to explain uh, how this all works together. So you need actually two API key. You need to have your OpenAI API key and then you need to have, a, have your Helicon key. I'm going to go back, sorry. I'm going to show you where you can find your key on Helicon. So if you go to my organization settings, API key, you can actually then see over there and make uh, and generate a new, uh, a new API key. If you open your HTTP request or you add an HTTP request on NA8, for instance, uh, here is the uh, URL. The URL would actually be different uh, in terms of uh, the um, LLM you use. So for example, Cloud will not have the same URL uh, than actually the OpenAI. Uh, if you think about it, this is actually the same format as OpenAI. Uh, OpenAI has the same v1 slash chat slash completion. This is a post method, uh, obviously, and we're going to have to do authentication. Um, 
I don't want to, I don't like to have my API key set up on the header like so, like the Helicon one, uh, or at least the sensitive API key. I don't like to set up set up this way. I might potentially at one point share the workflow, um, and this is not best practice because then your API is on the clear. Um, what I suggest you do, you actually select uh, authentication. It's a generic credential type authentication. We choose header uh, or and then I'm going to show you how to do this. Uh, you would actually uh, put authorization and then uh, your key. I'm not going to click on expression, otherwise I'm going to leak the key. I'm going to delete it anyway afterwards. But uh, if you wanted to do your key, all you need to do is you need to actually type bearer space and then your OpenAI API key. Okay, and you obviously copy this into your value instead of a name. Uh, the name is actually authorization. Okay. Once you have then, uh, once you have actually uh, this done, uh, enable the send header, and we're gonna have to pass a couple more parameters on the header for Helicon to work. Uh, content type is application Jensen. Um, this is actually your API key from Helicon which is the same as OpenAI, you would actually, same principle, you would actually, it's a bearer token, so you would actually add a bearer a space and then your API key over there. Um, Helicon Oats, uh, with your bearer token uh, over there, you would actually put your uh, API key from uh, Helicon. Um, another parameter to pass is actually Helicon cache enabled. Uh, I put it on true. Uh, according to the documentation, this actually helps the speed of the response. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll just put it over there. Um, and then this is actually uh, one that you can actually modify, Helicon property app. Uh, this is actually where you have this information. This is the tag, basically. If you go to property and you go to the app, uh, you can see this is the to the application, to the request, okay? You would then actually enable the send body. Send body is gonna be Jensen using Jensen. Uh, so you're gonna choose using Jensen and then you can actually copy and paste this wall block over there. Uh, if uh, I'll put it in the description as well in case uh, you guys wanted to just copy paste from there. Um, and now if I do a test, uh, test, this is exactly the same as if it was OpenAI. So I'm using the model GPT-40 in this case. Uh, I'm using actually a system prompt and I'm using the user prompt. Um, and so in this case, I'm asking about an alternative for a clean shot, um, and I can have the response. I literally have the response over there. That's actually how you can integrate uh, Helicon and monitor your cost uh, of workflow, the cost of the LLM operation with your workflow with uh, NA8. So we are in make now. What you have to do, you an HTTP module and you actually make uh, an API auth request. And this is actually exactly where I want you to go. So you would actually add your credential. We're gonna actually add your OpenAI, OpenAI credential. The key is gonna be the same. You can actually unhide it over there. You can actually type bearer space, and then you would actually put your uh, API key from OpenAI, okay? On the API placements, you leave it, it's on the header. All you need to change, you need to change this from XAPI key to authorization. You can actually then create this. I'm not going to create it, obviously. Um, you're going to change the post method. And then on the URL itself, I'm going to copy this from another uh, notepad I have on the side. On the header, is going to be content type. Uh, and that's going to be application slash Jensen. I'm adding another header. Uh, the other header is going to be Helicon Oats. And then we're going to have to pass your bearer key in this case. Uh, and so the Helicon API key that you can have. You can actually enable the cache if you want it. Uh, you can actually put this to true. True. One of the most important is the property app. And you can actually name, uh, you can name it the way you want. Uh, in this case, my app. Body type is going to be row, content type is going to be Jensen, and then the request, I'm going to put it over there. Little tips, uh, little tips if your Jensen is not uh, formatted properly or you want to keep the format of the Jensen, uh, you can do uh, on Mac or on Windows, uh, command or control, shift V, 
and this is going to paste actually uh, using the same, uh, leaving the formatting of the Johnson in this case. Uh, and if you want to have your Johnson formatted property, another tips, uh, you can actually go to Johnson Lint. Uh, in this case, the Johnson is formatted property. Um, but you can actually just validate it over there. And if we have actually, let, let's say I have actually wrong uh, indentation, you can actually go here. Uh, like I'm not putting the right indentation on the Johnson. I can then validate over there and then this validate the whole Johnson, keep the same formatting, make it very clear on make to, uh, to modify if needed. Um, on this prompt, specific prompt, uh, on this specific request content, sorry, we have actually model GPT-40. You can actually change this GPT-40. The message content, again, this is actually your system prompt. And in this case, the uh, role for, uh, it's the message of the, uh, the user. Uh, and you can actually pass whatever you want it. Since we're using an HTTP request, my suggestion would be you have your prompt into, for example, if it's a done for you service, um, you might potentially have your prompt in, into an Airtable, a Google Sheet, uh, where you have one place to actually update, update them all. Uh, I would actually suggest you do the same in this case. You would actually have in, in before, in before the HTTP module, you would actually have um, an Airtable where you have actually all your prompt and the models that you want to use. So then this actually dynamically uh, output this information for you. Uh, pressing OK would actually uh, make your connection working. I just didn't have mine uh, over there. So, um, right. And, uh, and that's it. That's actually how you would actually have Helicon and make also working and returning your cost operation or the amount of requests and the amount of cost we have per execution. And so you can actually keep track of your, um, of your cost for the LLM within your client slash workflow. I hope this video was actually interesting for you. Um, it's a little different format, maybe a little longer. Um, sorry, uh, I just find it was actually interesting to uh, use. I've got a lot of requests of people asking me, how do I monitor this? There is another another way as well. Also, uh, you could actually just addition the token into an Airtable. I just find that the, the dashboard view is actually interesting and you can actually share it more. Uh, it looks like more professional when you share that with your customer. Uh, once again, thank you for watching and I see you next week for the next video. Thank you. Bye bye.